Thank you for the reading. And thank you for the gathering. What an encouraging group. I hope the morning is lifting you up and uh, encouraging you that the rain is refreshing, not uh, dampening to your attitude and your spirits. Uh, For we have the opportunity to truly live, to live and rejoice, to live full and uh, excited lives. And I pray that in God uh, and with his wisdom and perspective and help that we do that. Uh, We ought to uh, sort of grab the opportunities and the joys and the uh, and the days by the by the horns, so to speak, and uh, and live uh, with the kind of confidence and fullness and joy uh, that God gives us opportunity for in Christ. You see, we have something that is so phenomenal. We have we have meaning infused into our days. We have purpose given to our lives. We know who we are, and we know whose we are, and we know where we're going. That's powerful stuff. Heard again a story about somebody who wanted to go out and find themselves. Just, oh, I don't know. I need to go find who I am, and that sort of a thing. I'm thinking, wow, Christ gives you those answers. It is so thrilling. It is so thrilling. Let's go to our Father in prayer before we begin this lesson. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you. We pray that, uh, indeed, Father, we do lead full lives, that we do walk with confidence in all the days you give us. Father, whether you call the end of our life tomorrow and we, uh, and we don't live out even the week, or whether you give us decades and decades more of service to you on this uh, planet. Father, we pray that we live every day with uh, purpose and joy and confidence, uh, knowing who you are and knowing who your son is, uh, and determined in our faith to be found uh, always walking in him. Father, we uh, lift up to you this time, and we pray that understanding and and wisdom and knowledge uh, can be ours uh, through your word. Father, we pray that uh, you can uh, prick our hearts and help us to know and understand uh, your purpose for, for our days. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know a lot of things. You know a lot of things. Lots of facts and details and, and pieces of information. You know, for some of you, you know how uh, the intricacies of a modern automobile works. Simply understanding the four-stroke cycle of an internal combustion engine doesn't do it anymore. Uh, not with the, the fuel injections and the uh, pneumatic and, and, uh, uh, and all the other systems going on in a vehicle. Uh, simple mechanics of, of, uh, of the way an automobile engine works isn't enough. There are so many interconnected systems that that knowledge becomes uh, complicated. Uh, but you know a lot of things if you can understand and, and repair something like that. Uh, you know a lot of things about your family. You know a lot of things about your job. You might specialize in knowing m- many things about animals or history or, or sewing Uh, And knowledge is a a useful, powerful tool. But but we don't just have knowledge to have it. We have it to to use it. And and in that is is understanding. Knowledge is a, a, a pack of information, of facts. Understanding is the interconnection of those facts. Conclusions made about those facts. Uh, Why is it useful? What do we do about it? That kind of thing. And finally, when we've established some understanding, we apply it to our lives, and that brings forth the word wisdom. The 
the use of knowledge and understanding. What do we do about it? How do we handle the day? Where do we go? What time do we get up? What time do we go to bed? What time did you go to bed last night? Was that a wise choice? When your eyes opened up this morning, did that feel like a foolish choice? You see, knowledge about how many hours of sleep you need a night and understanding about how you respond to waking up in the morning does not equal wisdom. Knowing what you need and understanding your own reaction to your sleep patterns does not mean that you'll dutifully go to bed at 9.30 because I need a full night's sleep. No, night after night, we sometimes talk ourselves into one more thing. Oh, let me, I can stay up. I'm fine. I'll be fine tomorrow morning. I'll just, I can keep working on this. I just want to finish this movie. I just want to start this movie. And then in the morning we wake up saying, I shouldn't have done that. Do the same thing with food, too. We, we live all of our lives that way. If you, if you look at an infant who, who's learning words, you see, ignorance is a common denominator of all of our lives. We all started ignorant. There's nothing criminal about being ignorant. Ignorant means you just don't know. You just don't know. Uh, these words have very separate uh, Greek identities in, in Scripture. I won't uh, get into the Greek words, one, because I don't know Greek very well, and two, it wouldn't change our understanding of what we're talking about. But for a child, uh, learning words is like, is like gaining knowledge. And if you've, if you've raised a child, all of a sudden your child will turn around to you and give you those words back in a sentence that you never gave to them. You might have told them mama or or food, or drink, or milk, or dog, or cat. And all of a sudden, one day, the child turns around and gives you a sentence. It's all their own. It's kind of exciting to see knowledge turn into understanding. They understand. They get it. They're putting together thoughts and, and, and communicating those thoughts. And then when eventually that child can, can be connected into a conversation... It's like wisdom. Now I can give you and listen to meaningful engagements. Knowledge helps build understanding, and understanding helps build wisdom. I developed some uh, more wisdom this morning. I've been without Carol now for three Sundays. She took off a couple of weeks ago. She extended her stay in Ohio, and she's coming back this Wednesday, we hope. Uh, this morning we were, the boys were dressed, I was ready, things were going great, and, and the chickens needed fed outside. Well, I, to keep the story short, I went out to help Isaac, and I was the one who was moving the water around and left the door of the chicken coop open too much. And the little white one, I can't remember her name, the little white hen hopped, one of the little white and black hens hopped out. And so now on a rainy morning in our wet backyard with us dressed for coming to church, I, we had a chicken running around. And the next 20 minutes had us going under wet bushes and across muddy spots in the yard and all the rest of it. And so when we finally caught this, this uh, young thing and got her back in her uh, coop, we were wet, we were muddy, and we were now late or about to be late. So, so knowledge builds builds understanding, which builds wisdom. I had, a, I had a child. I still have four children. But one of them used to throw tantrums as a child. I guess they all did at some point. But this one was particularly skilled in their tantrums. They would smack their head on the floor when they would throw a tantrum. So some little thing was going on. They grabbed a glass they shouldn't grab. They, they were reaching for something they shouldn't be reaching for. They, they wanted something we had to say not, not now to. And, and uh, our little one would throw themselves on the floor and go, wham, onto the floor, usually the kitchen floor. Well, that hurt. And, that, and, and if there was crying and a tantrum before, 
now there was a serious tantrum. And uh, we, would, we would respond. We wouldn't pick them up because it was their own doing. And so we would say, come here. I'll hold, I'll hold you, but you've got you to gotta make the move. You've got to come to us. And uh, the funny part developed as, uh, you know, days, days of these tantrums uh, happened. And finally, uh, uh, they threw a tantrum in the kitchen. And they got down to the floor, and they stopped. And they looked at the floor, and they looked at the carpeting, and they crawled over to the carpeting, and then they threw their head down. You see, knowledge develops understanding, and understanding develops wisdom. Understanding develops wisdom. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. We've been looking at, uh, at creation uh, this year. And in there, there's a very definite, in, the, in scientific facts, there's knowledge. In the putting together of those facts, there's understanding. And in the conclusion of a creator, there's wisdom. Verse 19 of Proverbs 3 reads this way. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps were broken up and the skies drip with dew. God is very clear about uh, about giving us all three of those entities. About giving us knowledge, about giving us understanding, and about giving us wisdom. Now, I know this was written poetically. Much of the Proverbs and Psalms is poetic language, but all of it is true. These are true statements of God's creation. Uh, Look at verse 7 of, of Proverbs 3. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. You see, wisdom can be based on our own uh, uh, processes that, that we think we're wise before our time. I'd like to go back to our, our uh, introductory verse that TJ read for us in Colossians chapter 1. For here we have uh, the, verses, the, the three words put together. Colossians chapter 1. For this reason, verse 9, Colossians 1, 9. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and ask that you may be filled. Consider this prayer being made for you. Specifically, Paul is making it for the church in Colossae. But we know these letters apply uh, to churches across the globe. So this is ours. And to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please him in all aspects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. You might have a footnote next to those uh, two uh, words, knowledge, in verse 9 and verse 10. Many times in the New Testament, the word knowledge is connected to the word that, that some English words are, are uh, associated with, with. Even the word knowledge comes from it. And that is the word gnosis. It starts with a G, G-N-O. Gnosis. But these words in Ephesians, I mean in Colossians chapter 1, are epinosis. Epi means the outer or the overcovering. This means the, the overknowledge, the higher knowledge, the full knowledge, if it is, and your, your footnote, your, your Bible might say true knowledge. Uh, if you've got a New American Standard, it might have a footnote that says real knowledge. Because this isn't just knowing. This is fully knowing. 
This is really knowing. I want you to know, to really know. And the two things we're supposed to really know here is his will and himself. That you really know God and that you really know his will. And then we have in verse 9 all spiritual wisdom and understanding. There is real knowledge. There is truth. And it's, that's one thing we should always hang on to as Christians. The logical conclusion that there is truth and that we can know it. And then the confidence that in a world created by our God, we can find it and follow it. That we can have knowledge. Christianity is not a mindless religion. Christianity, God repeatedly tells us and asks us to engage our minds, to know, to look, to think, to understand, and be wise. You see, there is a a, uh, a warning. There is a, a problem that you can have uh, either a lack of knowledge or wrong knowledge. Uh, to Romans uh, ten two talks about the Jews who are zealous for God, but the warning in Romans ten two is that their zeal is not based on knowledge. You see, you can be excited for something. You can be thrilled about something. You can, you can have a fervor for a faith or a religion. But God says it needs to be based on the truth. It needs to be based on what you, can, what you know. And, and in this case, ignoring Christ as the Savior, ignoring Christ as the Messiah, rendered the faith that he's talking about as, as, as a zeal not based on knowledge. But there's also a wrong kind of knowledge. Look at Romans uh, chapter 16. We're not supposed to be have knowledge in everything. We're not supposed to have knowledge in everything. In Romans 16... Verse 19, Paul writes about the Roman church and he praises their obedience. Listen to this, Romans 16, 19. For the report of your obedience has reached to all. Therefore, I am rejoicing over you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. See, there's knowledge worth having and there's knowledge that's not worth having. The knowledge of God, the full knowledge of God, as we're encouraged in Colossians 1, is priceless, precious, infinitely priceless. And there are numerous scriptures, many in Proverbs and other places, that talk about how how, uh, the knowledge of God is such a treasure. But the knowledge of evil is not a treasure. It is not useful. It simply creates more areas in our mind to understand how to do wrong. To to feed the, the desires of the flesh and to lead us into how into ways to, to trip up and fall. It is not right that we should go off and experience one lousy choice after another, after another, after another. We're not supposed to go and try to find out uh, what the pathways of wrong are like. God says specifically, I want you to be innocent of evil. Jesus says in Matthew 10, 16, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as as doves. I want you to be aware of dangers out there, but I don't want you to know all about them. I I want you to keep your innocence, keep your purity, keep your mind free. This is why modern movies can be so dangerous, because the combination of that dark room and that 
and that image invading your mind and the power of the sound and the rapidity and the effectiveness of a good editor who can throw images in front of your mind over and over with such dramatic music uh, and such effective um, a presence. It can change your mind, your thinking, and your understanding. It can give you a, a, uh, a, an awareness of evil. It can desensitize you, harming your heart and your very character. We're not supposed to be participating in evil. Most horror movies are that way. Many modern movies filled with uh, foul language and foul relationships and foul behavior are that way. The cynicism of our modern life which is either reflected by or fed by or both uh, the arts, uh, is this way. We're not supposed to be cynical. We started out talking about the confidence and joy we should have in our walk. Not the uh, cautious cynicism of, uh, of not trusting people and not, uh, not enjoying our days. So there is knowledge that should be avoided there's knowledge that should be avoided. There's understanding that's not appropriately established. Uh, most specifically, Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We misunderstand things all the time. We often misunderstand and, and apply bad understanding to relationships. I mean, simple things like uh, like trying to fix the automobile we talked about earlier. Well, I think it's this. You've come to some conclusion. You've come to some uh, uh, choice. You go out and buy the $140 replacement part, and you put it in, and it's still broken. Because it wasn't that at all. Now, how do you solve that? How do you, how do you fix relying on your own understanding? The simple way is, is add more knowledge, uh, but the easiest way to do that is to go get some counsel. Go ask. And in our relationships, in that struggle as we talked about between innocence and, and wisdom, uh, where should we draw the line? How careful should we be? How far back should I stand? How should I develop this relationship? What should I do about this problem at work? Go get some advice. Develop some counsel. Don't rely on your own understanding. Go to the Lord for uh, answers. Go to Scripture. Find out that, in fact, we're supposed to serve one another. We're supposed to serve even those who mistreat us. We're supposed to be kind and generous to those who mistreat us. You see, our own understanding will bring us to all sorts of wrong behavior, but seeking God's perspective on things. That will develop us into joy. So there can be wrong knowledge, there can be wrong understanding, and there can be wrong wisdom. Look at James chapter 3. James 3, please. James 3, starting in uh, verse 13. James 3, starting in verse 13. Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant. And so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil thing. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, 
full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering, without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Quite a, quite a contrast between wisdom based on me, my selfish ambition, my jealousies, my wants, my goals. Get out of my way or leave me alone. It creates uh, disorder. It creates uh, uh, broken relationships. It hurts. It's harsh. Godly wisdom, pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. That's the word reasonable. Willing to accommodate others. It's so different. Our lives are so different when we follow God and establish His wisdom. His wisdom. And in in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, godly wisdom from a different perspective. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You see, knowledge repairs ignorance. Understanding repairs confusion. If you find yourself going, I I, I don't know. I I, I just don't know. You don't have understanding. You're, You're short in your understanding. You either need more knowledge or you need some advice so that you can know. But wisdom fixes foolishness. Foolishness is, at its simplest, is the extra slice of cake last night or staying up till midnight. You know, those things we go, I'm smarter than that. (laughs) I know I shouldn't do that. That was dumb. We had a sermon on that a while back. That was dumb. But 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18 So wisdom fixes foolishness. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the cleverness of the clever I will set aside. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God, God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believed. For indeed, Jews ask for signs and Greeks search for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and to Gentiles, foolishness. Those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ crucified the power of God and the wisdom of God. The foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And then it goes on. At the cross, we see the intersection between godly wisdom and worldly wisdom. Worldly wisdom looks at the cross and sees failure. He's been executed. Who would follow a a, a small town carpenter who was convicted as a criminal and executed. And God says, open up your eyes. This is my power at hand. For my son has died for your sins that you don't have to. I sent you the best I have. And he chose death on the cross so that you can come home to me. That intersection between worldly wisdom and godly wisdom happens probably on a daily basis in our lives. And we need to know God, to understand God, and to use His wisdom to make our choices. Knowledge builds conclusions in our minds, which is understanding, 
and wisdom is those conclusions brought into action. Two verses, and we'll be done. So where do we get this wisdom? James 1 says, you ask God. Verse 5 says, you ask God for wisdom. But look at Proverbs 2, verse 6. Proverbs 2, verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. The guardian guarding the paths of justice. And he preserves the way of his godly ones. Then, notice what you get in verse 6. You get wisdom and knowledge and understanding. All from God. And in verse 9 we have a conclusion. Or at least a result. Then you will discern righteousness and justice. And equity and every good course. For wisdom will enter your heart. And knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will guard you. Understanding will watch over you. To deliver you from the way of evil. That's a powerful result. And it all comes from our Heavenly Father. So we stay in His Word daily. Make sure you have a daily Bible study time. Make sure you are reading and taking in His Word every day. Do it by yourself and do it with your family. Two, stay with people who are taking in God's word. Walk with Christians. Work with Christians in as much as you can. Talk, fellowship, be with Christians. And be active in the church. And then apply the courage to live the life he's given you to live. We'll end in Jeremiah 9.23. I'd ask you to make this your... Memory verse this week. But I know you probably all have started your memory verse this week, right? You've all got your own private set of memory verses. So if you've already got your own, you don't need to add this one this week. But if you haven't, make uh, Jeremiah 9, 23, and 24 your memory verse. Right? Jeremiah 9, 23, and 24. Thus says the Lord... Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, and let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not a rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts boast of this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness and justice and righteousness on the earth. For I delight, for I delight in these things, declares the Lord. Is that an awesome verse? Don't boast in your wisdom. Don't boast in your strength. Don't boast in your your wealth. Boast that you understand and know God. Our God delights in loving kindness and justice and righteousness. What a great verse. So, let us be a people who gain knowledge to develop understanding to apply godly wisdom. And the first and the most significant is that you know that Jesus is the Son of the living God, that you understand that you've separated yourself from God through the sins in your life, and that separation is forever and ever and horrible, more horrible than we can describe. That you understand that returning to God in Jesus Christ 
gives you that perfect and pure relationship forever and ever. And you've got the wisdom to make that choice. Don't let today go by without that piece of wisdom being applied to your life. But whatever you need today, if there's something you need to clear up with the congregation or any other need, please come forward and let us know while we stand and sing the song that's been selected.